Hi everyone! Fall is almost here and I need to get my wardrobe in order. Half of my clothes I don't even wear anymore and so I was like, let me go shopping. But when it comes to shopping, I am incredibly picky with a whole bunch of stuff. Like I want everything to be under $10 but I want it to come from a good company, but I want it to actually look cute. And when you put all of those requirements together, there's not many options. So I decided to go thrifting and I actually found some cute stuff the last time I went thrifting. However, that was like the last store out of seven different stores where I found absolutely nothing. And this was kind of like heartbreaking to me so I was like, what if I just make the things that I want to thrift? So here I am about to go through my Pinterest board to see if I can attempt to make my dream fall wardrobe. I am currently drinking some ginger and turmeric tea and I recently cut my bangs. Um, I like the length. I, I messed up right here, it's a little short on this side, but it's just really frizzy right now because I've been playing with it and the more I play with my hair, the frizzier it gets. So. Hopefully it looks nice the next time I wash my hair. But yeah, let's go ahead and go through the Pinterest board. All right, so I have my laptop right here and then I'm just gonna put like little photos of what I'm talking about up here. Um, but the first piece that I really wanna make is this one right here with the gradient colors. And I feel like this is incredibly cute. I feel like this is probably from Urban Outfitters. It looks like it, but I could be wrong. I purchased this yarn for it right here because I feel like the colors were matching it a bit. It's not as muted as the one in the photo. And I feel like it'll still be unique if I make it similar, but not exact, you know, like they could be cousins. I saw this bag and I really like these types of bags, but then I was thinking, what if I try to crochet one and have like different grids and stuff for each of the little patchwork squares. And so I saw this knitted bag and that kind of like confirmed my idea because I love how they have a flower in one square and then another square is cable knit and the other one has like a little cute little pattern. And I was thinking if I did something like that with fall colors and then more fall themed symbols like these stars or this little spiral or even this moon grid, I think it would be really cute. I think this granny square sweater that she's wearing is one of the cutest things I've ever seen, honestly. And I really wanna make one, but I don't think I'm gonna make one for this video because it's gonna take some time to make it and I don't have enough yarn. Like I, I, I say I don't have enough yarn for this because I want this to be exactly like the one that she's wearing, like to the T. I want the length to the, be the same. I want the colors to be the same. And I don't have some of these colors. So I'm just gonna hold off on that and maybe do it later down the line. I think this hexagon cardigan with this ribbing is really cute. Um, I don't think I wanna make it right now, maybe later in October or something, but it's, it's definitely on my list of things to make. This sweater right here, I really wanna make. I got yarn for it and everything. This is the yarn that I chose. And I was thinking of doing it on the knitting machine, but to make it look exactly like the photo, I was thinking of doing the front and the back panel on the knitting machine and then doing the arms, both of the arms completely with rib stitch and then attaching them like that. I was thinking of doing the arms on the knitting machine as well, but I, they're gonna kind of curl at the end and in the photo it's not curling and I want it to look exactly like the photo. So I'm just gonna do the arms by hand and then the front and back panel with the knitting machine. And another thing I was thinking of is doing another crochet maxi skirt, but with brown instead of green. And I think, I really feel like it would come out really, really cute. That's a total of four projects. And just as like a little backup project in case any of the projects don't end up turning out good, I wanna make some fall leg warmers, but that's gonna be the last thing because I don't wanna make the leg warmers with a yarn and then start a different project and be like, oh my gosh, I needed this yarn for this. I should have waited. So it's gonna be completely last. So it's the gradient sweater, the um, maxi skirt, the patchwork bag, and then the knitting machine sweater. So a total of four items. And then if I feel like it, I'll do the leg warmers. And, and I know it seems like a lot, but honestly, I'm thinking that it's not gonna really take that long to do. 
because I already have a pattern for the sweater that I always use, whether it's a cast on of 70 or a cast on of 90, and I just work it up. And then I do the same with the arms and then call it a day. The knitting machine sweater is probably not even gonna take that long. The maxi skirt is probably gonna take some time and so will the uh, patchwork bag because if I'm doing different grid patterns, I have to count them all up and really make sure that I'm doing it correctly. So I feel like the bag and the maxi skirt is gonna take a little bit of time but it's still not gonna take a dramatic amount of time. Before I get started, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a learning platform that allows you to explore and discover an array of different classes that cater to any creative hobbies that you can think of. You wanna learn how to draw and at the same time learn how to be more productive? What about learning music with the Jacob Collier, who's an amazing artist, by the way? Well, with Skillshare, you can do just that. I'm personally getting ready to start learning how to draw so I can draw better designs for my future projects instead of them looking like, well, this. Yes, this is supposed to be a pair of pants. I've also been interested in learning as much as possible about color theory so that I can be a master at choosing the perfect color combinations, and thankfully, Skillshare offers classes for just that. And if you're ever unsure of a course, there are honest reviews from others who've decided to take that specific course so you can see whether or not it's the right one for you. Right now, Skillshare has an amazing offer for you, which is the first 500 people to join will get one whole month of Skillshare for free and 40% off your first year of a Skillshare membership. That's a ton of classes in one month and so much knowledge and creativity to discover. If you're interested, you can click my link in the description box below to join Skillshare and enhance your passions. Hey. I did 10 rows for the ribbing and then I started the stockinette section and I feel like I should have changed my needles after doing the ribbing because the difference between the ribbing and the stockinette is pretty obvious and hopefully it'll fix a bit when I block it but I'm not gonna go back because I already finished over 13 rows of the stockinette stitch and I don't feel like going back so I'm just gonna deal with it. I really like how the colors are coming out so far it is giving fall, but it's like a 70s fall, if that makes sense. Probably not, but I, I see this as like a 70s color palette. Um, it's really cute. It's not like the picture at all when it comes to the colors, but I still am enjoying how it's coming out so far. I was thinking of redoing the intro to this video because I hated the way my hair looked, but it would be pretty ingenuine if I were to re-record it because I was choosing the pieces for this video and I think it'd be pretty weird if I was like pretending to choose the pieces over again even though I already did it because I recorded the intro already. So I was like they're just gonna have to deal with my horrible bangs. But thankfully it's easy to hide my bangs in my hair like I could easily just pin them back. So I was like it's fine they'll grow out fast and I can hide them so it's not that big of a video and hopefully when I wash my hair soon the curls will kind of come back so that it doesn't look as frizzy as it did in the intro. But yeah, I'm gonna be working on this for quite a while and I don't have anything to talk about. Not much of a talker. So yeah, I'll be back when the front panel is done. I continued working on the front panel and then eventually the back panel as the day went on, which surprised me because I thought the front panel would take all day to do. Yesterday, I finished the front panel for my sweater and I finished it pretty early, so I went ahead and started the second panel, which I just finished like five minutes ago. Um, the only thing I have to do is the little decrease sections, so I thought it would be cool to basically go over how I do it, because I do get a lot of questions on how I shape my necklines. Literally, the only thing I do is I find the middle of the piece and then kind of hold it up to my neck, and then I'll kind of like pin or hold it down where my neck ends. And then based on there, I'll add like two stitch markers in the middle where the cord for my needles are. And then all I do is count the stitches in the middle and then count the stitches on the side. And if they're uneven, I try to make the side stitches the exact same number. So I'll just play around, but also make sure that it's gonna be able to go over my head. And then I knit the shoulders. So for this sweater in particular, I casted on 80 stitches to start the panel. In the middle, I figured out that for my neckline, it should be about 14 stitches. And then on the sides, I made sure that they were both 33 stitches. So 33 plus 33 plus 14 is 80. 
And so what I'm gonna do for the shoulders and the neckline is I'm going to knit 33 stitches. And then after that, I'm gonna cast off 14 stitches and then knit 32 stitches. And then the last stitch on the cast off is gonna count as the 33rd stitch or the first stitch before I go ahead and knit the other 32 stitches. And then after that, I do my decreases, which I'll get to in a second. So like I said, I first knitted 33 stitches. After the 33 stitches, I began to cast off 14 stitches. To do this, I first knitted two stitches and then pulled the first stitch over the second stitch, which counts as one cast off stitch. I then repeated this for a total of 14 stitches, which gives me one stitch remaining before the next set of 33. Then, including the stitch remaining on the right needle, I knitted the last 33 stitches. After this, the shoulder sections were ready to be worked. For the decrease sections, all I did was work down the purl row until the last two stitches before the cast off section. Then I purled into both stitches, which is a decrease. I turned my work and on the knit side where the cast off section is, I knitted into the first two stitches before working down the row normally. I repeated this for a total of eight rows of decreases before casting the side off. I then attached my yarn to the other side, making sure it's attached to the purl row and two stitches so that I could start the row off with a decrease before working the rest of the row normally. After I did my eight rows of decreases and cast it off, the front and back panels were complete. Here is what the sweater is looking like so far. I already attached the front and the back panel together just to see where exactly the panels stop so I can see how long I had to make the arm. And I went ahead and already made the arm panel. And if I make it to where it stops, like right here on my wrist, it reaches just the amount that I need it to. And I didn't want it to be this like wide, but it's okay. I'm not really going over the sweater like I usually do in my videos, mainly because if you look at all of my like film recreation videos, or if I ever knit a sweater in any of those videos, it's literally the exact same pattern. And I do go in depth in some of them on how I do the decreases and how I do the arms and stuff. I'm still gonna go over it briefly. And I still do have like the little instructions of how much amount of what stitch I do for specific parts of the sweater. But yeah, I just finished the arm. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. And I also went ahead and started the second arm. Just for reference, I did 10 rows of rib stitch, which is knit one, purl one. And then I am gonna go ahead and start my increases so that it eventually gets wide enough to fit my arm. And after I finish this arm, I'm gonna go ahead and attach them add a collar and then block my sweater. And then we can move on to the other projects in this video. For the increases for the arm, all I did was increase into every fourth stitch for the next three knit rows. To do this, all I did was knit the first three stitches normally. Then in the fourth stitch, I added an increase. Then for the purl side of the row, I just purled the stitches normally. After three knit rows or six rows in total, I increased into every sixth stitch for row seven, which is the fourth knit row. After that row of increases, I worked normal stockinette stitch for the rest of the arm. Once the second arm was complete, I went ahead and attached them to the body of the sweater. The last thing I had to do for the sweater was create the collar. To make the collar, I attached my needles to the neck area with the smallest cord I had and did rib stitch around for a total of seven rows. I then cast it off and went ahead and began the process of blocking my sweater. I added my sweater into warm water and added this wool wash into the water and pressed the sweater down, making sure it was submerged. After, I looked at the sweater and thought the colors looked cooler, darker, but I actually do like the color that I used, so I wasn't mad about it or anything. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but it's kind of making like this cracking noise. Let me show you.
After soaking it for 15 minutes, I went to take the sweater out the water and noticed the water was yellow, which I'm guessing happened because some of the dye from the yarn came out. I pressed all the water out and then pinned the sweater down on my blocking mats. Right now my sweater is blocking, so I thought this would be the best time to go ahead and start the brown maxi skirt. I am going to start with this 100% wool. It's dark, and I feel like this is gonna be a lot better than the bamboo I used in my green version. Also for that version, I did 50, I did like, I think 56 rows for the waistband, and it ended up being really big because the weight of the skirt made it wider, especially the more times I put it on. And so I suggested to start with 50, but I think for this, I'm gonna actually start with 45, and then I'm gonna do two rows of normal single crochet after I join the waistband in the round. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start the skirt. I'm still gonna show you what I'm about to do, but I feel like that will make the waistband pretty tight so that when the skirt gets weighed down, it doesn't affect the waistband. But we will have to see. I went ahead and started with my waistband, which was a chain of eight, and then I worked 47 rows of half double crochet in the back loop only. Once I reached 47 rows, I measured the waistband stretched, and it stretched way over 33 inches, which was too much since my waist is 26 inches. So I pulled off eight rows for the waistband to hit where I needed it to be, and the total amount of rows changed from 47 to 39. I then joined the sides in the round and worked two rows of single crochet. After two rows of single crochet, I worked an increase into every stitch and then began working my skirt randomly, switching colors when I felt like it, and choosing different stitches to use in random places. The next day, I tried on the skirt and it was looking pretty cute so far. It took a while to get the waistband over my hips, but the more that I put it on, the more it stretches out, so it'll get easier the more I wear it. It's been a couple of days since I worked on the skirt. This is what I have done so far. I finished two layers and I have to start the third but I'm kind of running out of yarn and so I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and move on to the other two projects and then after those are done I'm going to have yarn left over from those that I can strategically place within the skirt so that I can fill it out. So right now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the knitting machine sweater and then after that I'm going to go ahead and plan for the bag. I went ahead and started the front panel, making sure it was on panel mode and cast it on. I then worked back and forth on the machine for 120 rows before casting off. I just finished the front and the back panel and oh my gosh, the knitting machine in panel mode is so annoying. When it's in tube mode, it's so easy. All you do is crank and then cast off and then the project's basically done. But with the panel mode, the stitches are always falling off some of them get stuck and then you're sitting there trying to fix it like the first one that i did was really simple it took like 30 ish minutes but then the second one took almost an hour and 30 minutes because i started over at least three times and i was like kind of annoyed so i didn't record anything but i finally got them done and now i'm contemplating on whether or not i should do the sleeves like this or go ahead and suffer through two more panels to make regular sleeves. The plus side is I think this type of sleeve would look a lot better and I can shape it more to my arms, but this one, I, if I do this one, it'll take like another two hours and then I'll be done today. But who knows how long the sleeve, these sleeves will take, especially because they're ribbed. And me personally, I take a longer time doing Knit One Pearl One. So I think I kind of just found my answer. I'm just gonna do regular sleeves with the central machine and then I'm gonna go ahead and put it all together. I quickly worked on the arms for a total of 102 rows and then was finally ready to put the sweater together. I first took the front panel and held it to my chest and used stitch markers to mark where I wanted the neck area to be. I then placed those stitch markers into the back panel and aligned the shoulder sections together and sewed them together. After that, I sewed the arms to the sides of the sweater and then once it was all attached, blocked the sweater and then moved on to the next project. 
Right now, my sweater is in the tub soaking for 15 minutes and I wanted to take the time to really plan out what I want to make next. The whole bag idea, I don't feel like doing it anymore. I was really excited about it, but then when I started doing the sweater, that took a while and then I started doing the skirt and after doing the second sweater for this video, I was like, I don't really need another crochet bag. Like I've made a lot of crochet bags and this this type of bag in particular would be pretty cool to make. I'm feeling a little bit unmotivated to make that one in particular. Maybe later down the line, I'll wanna make it, but as of right now, it's not really something that I wanna make. So I was trying to figure out, okay, well I have all this yarn, what else should I make? And I was thinking, and I was thinking of doing the leg warmers that I mentioned earlier in the video. I still think that they'll be really cute. And now I'm thinking whether or not I should do it these three colors or this one, this one mix. Like if I use this, I don't have to switch any colors. I can just go ahead and, cro or I can just go ahead and knit and like nonstop. But with these, I do have to change the color. But I like these because it's a lot more muted and in one of the reference photos I'll show you. These leg warmers right here are from Urban Outfitters and I don't think they sell them anymore, but I think these are really, really cute and I can see myself wearing them exactly like this with the tights and docks and all. And that's influencing me to use the muted colors a lot more now. So I might just go ahead and do that. Um, that's actually making me a bit more happier than working on a bag that I don't want to work on. Um, I'd rather make these leg warmers for sure. And then I still have to finish this skirt. Okay, that's making me feel a little bit better. Like I was I was feeling like, oh, I don't really I really don't want to make this bag. But now that I'm like, okay, I'm not going to. My my mood has perked up a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and work on the leg warmers and my skirt. I have a video on leg warmers already and i'm gonna just be following the pattern that i did on there for the leg warmers and then like i said earlier i'm just gonna be working on the skirt and then we'll be done the next day i worked on the leg warmers which was a cast on of 40 and worked in the round for 60 rows while working on it i began to think about how i feel like i'm not really working with my true potential in crochet and knit like i want to create something really cool and unique and even though i'm proud of what i've made i haven't made something yet that really makes me proud if that makes sense i feel like it's because i've been wanting to branch out from basics that i've been working on to develop my techniques and skills since i've only really started crocheting and knitting in 2021 so for the past couple of years i've been just figuring out what i'm doing but now that i have sort of an idea i really want to push that creativity and make something worthwhile after the leg warmers were done i got back to work on the skirt which i completed the next day before i talk about the sweater i have two things to say the first thing is is i am not sure why i wanted to wait until the last part of the video to talk about all the pieces usually i'll do it right after i make it i don't know the structure is a bit weird so sorry about that and number two i know that my video quality has been pretty bad in terms of sound and uh visuals in the past i used to use my camera to take videos of me crocheting and stuff but it would always go out of focus like if you look at my old like hat video or my crochet cardigan tutorial you'll see that it constantly goes out of focus but then when i switch to filming on my phone it's a lot more it stays in focus and stuff but my phone is an iphone se 2020 the quality sucks <laughs> so i'm thinking about getting a new phone soon and also learning how to figure out how to make the camera stay in focus because even if it was in manual mode it still is like messing up and so I'm trying to figure out a balance with that. So I'm sorry about the quality if you ever noticed it. And I I'm, I got my microphone fixed, so I'm gonna be using that soon. So yeah, just a, just a FYI. Anyway, the sweater. This is what it looks like. It's very fluid and soft, mainly because I blocked it. I'm, I always talk about blocking in my videos now, but I'm just always so shocked at how much it transforms your pieces. Like you would think of, piece would just be feeling like very like rigid and stiff but then you block it and it feels like you bought it from the store and it's so cool the one thing i have to say though like i said in my brown crochet video uh you know the arms are <laughs> the arms are kind of big but you know and i i when i was increasing i really thought that 
the last row that I did, I had to do because it was not gonna fit over my arm. But I tend to overestimate how much I need for the arms. But it's cozy, it makes it really cozy, and I like it, it's not that bad. I really love the colors, it's very autumnal, and I am excited to wear it out. I made sure to make pieces in this video that I would actually like actually wear. And this is just really comfortable. I can layer a turtleneck underneath if I wanted to. I can put this under some overalls or something, or, you know, just spice it up however I want. And I really like it. Here is the Centro Knitting Machine sweater that I did. If you can see, the arms are actually done correctly at a great size, not too short, not too baggy. And it goes to my belly button. And even if I like pull it down, it, it gradually goes back up. I think it's like the perfect size for like a fitted sweater and it's not stiff or uncomfortable around the arms or anything. It's very soft and perfect. I'm really excited to figure out how I want to style this because it's very, it's a chill little sweater that's still good for autumn and stuff. This is what the back looks like. I wanted to wear it this way, but if you can see there's like a little line here from the yarn and I didn't want that on the front because it looks like I like I messed up or something, if you can see that. So I just put that in the back. But then I get this little splotch from the yarn that I don't like, but it's not that deep. But yep, this is the sweater. There was no way for me to show this fully, so I'm gonna have a little video here of what it looks like. But here's the skirt in its entirety. And oh my gosh. Okay, I love these types of skirts. They're really cute and everything, but making them is very repetitive. Like the first two layers is fine, but then once I hit the third layer, I'm like, okay, when is this project gonna be done? Depending on what stitch you use, it takes about 30 minutes just to make one or two rows because of how big it is. And towards the end, I was really like, I was going through it, I was like, oh man, this is taking forever. But I'm really happy that I stuck through and finished it because I really liked the green one that I did and I really wanted a brown version as well. Um, there's a bit of gray in here because I was running out of brown, but I still think it adds flavor to it. Like there's pops of orange in here too. And sorry about these ends, I still haven't weaved them all in and cut the ends correctly. I'm about to do that in a little bit. But they're, it's really cute and I added a little drawstring to it as well. In the future, I want to make a black version just to see how that would look. And then I'd be done with making these types of skirts. But they're really fun to do and if you have like scrap yarn that is pretty consistent in a color or if you want it to go full out and just do a whole bunch of different colors, this is like one of the perfect projects to do that if you like maxi skirts like this. This is the skirt and I love it. This is what the leg warmers are looking like. Um, I was gonna pair them with my Doc Martens, but I didn't clean the bottom of my Doc Martens just yet. So I'm going to be using my Mary Janes instead. I really like how these came out. They match my sweater. So if I wanna wear like a black skirt and then my leg warmers with the fall sweater that I made earlier, I think that'll work perfectly or even just some tights and stuff. But yeah, I really like them. There's not much else to say. They're leg warmers. Leg warmers have always been cute. And yeah. Thank you for watching this video. And I wanna give a thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.